this man have, a, have an accident? When I examined him, I looked at the chest. There were no respiratory movements. But I've never heard of people, somebody, who have been three days in the mortuary. She said, Dad, did you know you was in mortuary three days? And this the death certificate, you know. Welcome to this Testimony Tuesday. I'm Jason here, and every Tuesday I bring you amazing testimonies. Today I've got an awesome testimony, and I won't even be able to share this in one video. Today we'll do the part one of this testimony of this man who was raised from the dead after three days, and then next week I'll continue with the second part of the testimony. So amazing. So without wasting much time, let's just get straight into that video. Amen. of November 2001, I had accident, all in onnettomuudessa. This accident was so fatal to the extent that I hit my chest on this chariot. Se oli niin kohtalokas onnettomuus, että mun rintani osui ohjauspyörään. I was vomiting blood from my mouth and blood was coming out of my nose. Oksensin verta ja verta tuli myöskin nenästäni. And people around there rushed me to a nearby hospital. Ja ihmiset siinä ympärillä veivät läheiseen sairaalaan minut. Why they took me to hospital? Sillä aikaa kun minua vietiin sinne, pains was all over me. Kivut olivat joka puolella. Pains was all over my body. Joka puolella ruumista ni koin kipuja. For me to breathe in was as if somebody was stabbing me with arrow. Se että minä hengitin sisään, se olisi ihan niin kuin joku olisi nuolella iskenyt selkää. Because of that I was struggling with my life. Ja siksi taistelin. So the moment I heard him screaming and I heard that pastor is dead, I knew it's my husband. So I, from that upstairs, I ran down. I began to run towards the place where the accident happened. When Nega arrived at the scene of the accident, she learned that Daniel was still alive, but in a very serious condition. Bystanders had taken him to the local hospital where Nega found him. After being rushed to the intensive care unit at Burunyu Hospital, Daniel refused to be treated. Instead, he insisted that he be taken to his family doctor, all the way out in Oweri. I must go to Dr. Mizirake. He's our family doctor at Oweri. Family doctor? It's what my husband wants. The hospital surgeon told Daniel's wife in no uncertain terms that he was in no state to travel given the extent of his injuries. In the head. Yeah. He's concussed. He's confused now. Mm -hmm. And he's in no composition to decide what's best for him. For the but despite the surgeon's pleas, Neka was adamant. It's what my husband wants. If he leaves now, I'm afraid he will die. That's and I'm mean. certain of that. And they discharged us that night. They said I should sign that I'm uh, taking him on my own risk. And I had to do it. So we took him to his uh, private doctor to worry. On our way to that place, uh, he called me that I should take care of the church and the ministry and the children. Take care of the children and the ministry. Shh. Don't try to talk. I have good dear medical center. So time is late. They say they will not they will they won't attend to us. So the doctor is not around. So one doctor and one nurse came out to come and check what happened. They say we said that this man have, a, have an accident. They say okay there is no time. This man is already a dead man. We should take him to mortuary. We rushed to this St. Eunice clinic and met Dr. Josie, the one we met up there. Then he thoroughly examined him and said he's off that it's better we remove him and put him to the mortuary. I was told he was involved in a motor accident at Onisha. When I examined him, I looked at the chest. There were no respiratory movements. I listened with the stethoscope. There were no breath sounds. I tried to look at the heart, the cardiovascular system. There were no heart sounds, and the patient had no pulse. I looked at the eyes. The pupils were fixed and dilated. I just made an impression right away. 
that the patient was dead and he should be removed to the mortuary. Where's Nega? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do for you. I'm sorry. This is the death certificate. Give it to the mortician. He'll take care of you, okay? I'm sorry. that place, the doctor came and they checked him. After checking him, he discovered that uh, he's dead. That uh, no, mo no respiratory organ, that everything is seized, that we should go away or we should deposit him in his own uh, mortuary. Then to me, I disbelieved him. I said, no, that my husband is not dead. He cannot leave me and go like that. My wife now said, it's no need of Depositing him in the mortuary, let me take him to the hometown so that the parents will see him. Vaimon is not David as the room is one let the Vedas in the Koti Kaupunki, your Samia and Vai, one Hemat Wabat Nahra Rumi. When my wife brought me to my hometown, Yakul Vaimon and Toy Mutoma and Koti Kaupunki, people we are crying because by the grace of God, most of their needs, I meet most of their physical needs. Pan me? In my hometown. Koti Kaupung is any. Because of the blessings of God in my life, tähden, oli minua, I bless them financially and otherwise. Olen, olin siunannut koti, taloudellisesti ja muilla tavoilla. So when my dead body was brought home, everybody was shouting and crying. Joten kun mun kuollu ruumiini tuotiin sinne, niin kaikki itkivät ja huusivat. And at the end, my father said, before people crowd, we rush here, let's deposit him back to the mortuary. They now took me, my father and my wife and the rest of my, my relation, they now took me to a nearby mortuary and deposited me in the mortuary on Friday. The yes, day lopu ya lopu in the... To prove God again. And she said that someone like me appeared to her. Ja hän sanoi, että joku minun kaltaiseni tuli hänen luokseen, ilmestyi, ja mä sanoin, että ei se minä ollut. Because I did not remember anything concerning the earth, neither my wife, neither my children, neither my my mother, neither anything physically. I couldn't remember anything. Koska mä muista kuolleista lo ajasta yhtään mitään niinku fyysiseen maailmaan liittyvä, en lapsista ni vaimosta ni kodista ni mistä. That is why you should not allow anything to distract you from serving your God, because in a twinkle of an eye, whatever that is distracting you will disappear from you. Sen takia sinun ei pitäisi minkään antaa tulla sun Jumalan palvontas väliin, koska kaikki se katoaa. And my wife said that when I appeared, I said to her, why did you dump me at the mortuary? Take me to a place where they will pray for me, and I'll come back to life. Ja mä sanoin siinä ilmestyksessä vaimolle, niin vaimo koki näin, että, että minkä takia olen ruumi sun, että uh, take me to... To where I'll be prayed for. Ja vaan vie minun täältä ruumi sun, että semmoiseen paikkaan, missä puolestani rukoillaan. And she shouted, and behold, it was in a trance. Ja hän huusi ja katso vaimoni oli hurmoksissa. And everybody ran to her, say, what is it? What is it? She said, I saw my husband. Ja vaimoni sanoi, mä näin mieheni, mieheni, kun he tulivat kyselle, mitä on. And they said, no, 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 forget about that. That is imagination. It ja hänelle sanottiin, ei, ei, tämä on mielikuvitusta, mielikuvitusta. Any woman that lost her husband will always experience that. Forget Ka about it. Ka kaikki, jotka menettävät puolisonsa, ne saa tällaisia. Unohda koko juttu. And she said, no. Ja vaimoni sanoi, ei. She insisted. Hän vaati... On Saturday, while we were sleeping in the night, the wife of my son, for I took him to the mortuary. He said, the woman said that the husband is disturbing her that they should carry her to Anisha for Reverend Bucky. It was around the, between 12 1 midnight when I came out. I started hearing some noise over here. I wonder maybe the churches, uh, I mean the church people over there, maybe they're having crusade or something like that. And I keep on hearing singing and praises, clapping. I wondered, one of my mind told me to come down, maybe that happens in the mortuary.
As early as 5.30 to 6, I left my house to, with that dress, facing the dad, reaching uh, Amimo Ikeduro. Then when I asked of the, the man, Reverend, I mean, the man, Mr. Lawrence uh, A.K. Ihuba, then they directed me to him and I told him to come and remove the corpse that they brought inside my mortuary. They claimed that he died on accident uh, case because during that time he was bleeding. Yeah. Then I asked them to come and remove the body. Huh. I saw some kind of uh, signs. I don't know what is wrong with the cops. I don't want anything to hurt me because this job is a tedious job. It's a dangerous uh, job. Morning, Dioba. What brings you so early? I want that body out of my mug. <laughs> Why? Things happened last night. What thing happened? What happened? Sounds of music coming from his room. Oh, calm down. The music may have come from the village. There were villagers marrying. What has that got to do with the dead? Not that. What exactly? This is no dream. There were music coming from his room. Yo, but tell me, were you drinking last night or what? I didn't drink anything. I mean every bit of it. Um, his glorious cathedral, Grace of God Mission, Anambara State. That was Aguleri, Omuleri Road. We are Reverend Bonke, Rehad Bonke, serving crusade. That let Rehad Bonke pray for him that he will raise again. <laughs> I started laughing. So this girl, they say, yes, okay, give me the tally. She went and bought the tally and cleared the bill. Then we dress the body when I dress the corpse. I called on my assistant to join me. They hired an ambulance. They went and bought a coffin, the white coffin inside the room there. I said, okay, I'll go with two people. Let me witness. Maybe it is the power of God or anything that happens, I will know. After some time, my, my father-in-law considered then both of us. He, he went to them and planned with them. Before I could come, they have already put my husband inside the gasket and I was with my first son, Victor. So when we reached there, I hide the child somewhere so that he will not see the father because as he questioning me, where is my daddy? I told him, your daddy is in the village. When we reached the village, he asked me, where is his daddy? I told him, he's at Tanisha. So I was deceiving the little boy and he was crying. So the moment... A lot of people, more than 20,000 people. I looked my left, right, everywhere. People were shouting, crying everywhere. Some, some was praising God, some was crying, some was... I was looking around, I couldn't understand what was happening. Because to me, I was falling down and I fell into pain. And to me, when I opened my eyes, I, was see, I saw all hands was grabbing me. They, they said to me that I jumped up. I saw this big cathedral. It's a very big cathedral. I looked by my right, my left, my front and my back. Everywhere was full of people. And some people were shouting, some were saying coffin, some say mortuary, some say three days. I couldn't understand what was happening because uh, my experience there is not more than 15 minutes, so I don't know what they call about three days. To me, there was no night, there was no day, there was, it was only that moment I was into. I now uh, said to my wife, yes, what is happening? She said I should keep quiet until when we get to the house. Brought me back to my house, this place with my wife. So when we get inside the bedroom, uh, that's been on 2nd of December, I asked my wife, what is happening? What, 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 what about coughing and two days and mortuary? What is happening? Then my wife now begin to look at my body where they injected chemical and she said, Dad, did you know you was in mortuary three days? And it's the death certificate, you know? Uh, while I left the ambulance, uh, they, they still went to the hospital. So the doctor now confirmed 
uh, that I, I, I have died. They now use their equipment, check. According to, you can see, uh, they, they check the heartbeat, everything, the, 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 the eye pupil, everything. According to the doctor, he, after checking everything, he now confirmed that I was totally dead. He now gave them certificate that I sh they should remove me. You can see it here, say, uh, uh, remove for mortuary. That he will have enough air. So we take him to the main auditorium, people trunk. Suddenly we saw people coming in from the outside. It seemed that the news went in and people started coming in. As people were coming in there, they saw the same man sitting down. It was on the 30th of uh, November. That was a Friday night. Then he was being brought here by the, parent, by the father and the wife. Then with a red Volvo ambulance. Then when I handed over, I mean they handed me over the cops. We lay him down here for first examination. Then when they left, I filled the forms, every other thing, every necessary arrangements. I give them the tally as normal procedure, and they left. All right, this is the mortuary, and this is room two. This is where we laid him. On top of this slab is where we laid him. A very night. So this is the coffin where he was being put, all from here to Anisha, where he was being, where is the game? These are the piece of a uh, cotton wool that we used to close your stocking nose, stockings for your leg, and the iron gloves that we used to close your and during the day. That was the day of for Sunday. This is where we was being laid down all the way for you to Onesha. So on the first thing, Sunday so morning, your wife came down and cried to me, told me that. There's a man of God in town, an evangelist. We had a bunkie. Well, it's shocking. Seeing a dead man. 
somebody that, that was once dead is now alive. It's very shocking. And again, looking at the person and almost discussing with him. To God, all glory should go. Up to now, I'm still afraid of him because the experience I saw on Friday and what I'm seeing here today, I think uh, we should give God thanks. Because uh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it myself. For that time, on Monday, when he came to my house, he was smelling chemical. He was smelling chemical all over him. You see, but now, I haven't seen such a thing. I know that dead people can be raised to life, but I've never heard of people, somebody, who have been three days in the mortuary. It was a security man that removed the cotton wool in his nose, untied everything in his hand. It was too much. Wow, I, I trust and I know that you are blessed by that testimony which you just saw. It's amazing testimony confirmed by the doctor, confirmed by the friends, confirmed by the pastors, confirmed by the people in the community. So many people saw this man uh, dead and they witnessed the miracle of him being raised from the dead at uh, Reinhard Bonke's crusade. They put his body under the basement. But it's so amazing that uh, I believe it was the faith of his wife as well as the desire of God for him to be raised from the dead. You know, the Bible says death is an enemy. And I trust you are blessed by this. If this blessed you, just subscribe to the channel. Every week I bring these amazing testimonies. And every Wednesday I share the word. In fact, tomorrow I'll be bringing the word about the miraculous power of God and how we can access the power of God by using our faith. Just like the scripture which uh, we saw there, which uh, the pastor Daniel's wife quoted. Let me just read it. It's Hebrews 11 verse 35. It says, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. So there's something which happens when we put our faith to work. So tomorrow, don't miss, I'm going to bring that word on faith and how you can see the miraculous power of God by using your faith. Next week, part two of this testimony, you have to hear what Pastor Daniel experienced when he went to heaven and he went to hell and what the angel told him was going to be his outcome if he had died on that day. It shocked him because he had an argument with his wife and um, it wasn't going to be good for him so watch that video next week tomorrow i'll be back with the word if you haven't yet received jesus christ i encourage you to make jesus lord of your life say the prayer to follow and give your life to jesus amen i love you so much and god loves you too amen he loves you more than me have a blessed day i'll be back again tomorrow amen thank you for listening thank you for watching if you haven't received salvation in jesus christ say this prayer with me right now just say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose from the dead. I declare that I am saved and born again. I am your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Subscribe and follow on social media platforms, on YouTube, The Word of Truth, Jason Paul Pullen, on all your podcasting platforms, The Word for Today with Jason Pullen, Spotify, Audible, Acast, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can also follow us on Instagram, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Facebook, The Word of Truth JC. You can follow us on Twitter at The Word of underscore Truth. There's free books available in the link below as well as on Amazon.com. If you'd like to partner with me, you can go to PayPal, paypal.me forward slash jpj or via scroll jpjs at gmail.com send an email the word of truth publications at gmail.com thank you for listening thank you for watching god bless you amen